All right, so this lesson, like I said, is not going to be part of tomorrow's test. This is our first lesson for chapter five, which is module two, topic two in your textbook. Today, we're gonna to be uh, doing pages M297 to 102. If you do not have any of those pages, you can always download them from Google Classroom. And what I want you to do as part of this assignment is I want you to take a picture, you know, just like how we do the, the PDF, take a picture of these textbook pages, right, that you filled out, and that's what you're gonna get points for. So take a picture of your textbook pages that you fill out, and you'll get points for that. If you don't have the textbook pages, then you can just copy down what we write onto a separate piece of paper, or you can download them uh, from the website. So before we jump into it, uh, this video is gonna pause in a second, and you're, you're gonna answer these four questions as best as you can. Just give me your best guess for what X would equal. It doesn't have to be totally correct, just you know, give me your best guess and then we'll check your work. Please don't use the internet, right? I'm not grading this for if you got it right, I'm more just looking for that you attempted it. So don't use the internet, try not to use a calculator, just do it on your own and see where you're at. So we'll go over each of them. Uh, I'm gonna do number one over here. So we had one third X is equal to eight. Anytime we have a fraction, I don't really like having fractions when I'm solving equations, so I always get rid of my fractions. And we're gonna go over the, the properties and you know everything, but hopefully you know from at least eighth grade math that whenever you have an equal sign, you can add a number to both sides, subtract a number to both sides, multiply a number to both sides, or divide a number to both sides. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna, to both sides, we're gonna multiply by the denominator of the fraction, which is three. When you multiply by the denominator of a fraction, what happens is this is like having three over three, so it cancels out. So we end up with x is equal to eight times three is 24. And number two, we had a decimal, but it was just five plus x, okay? So we have five plus x is equal to 12.7. If we're trying to isolate for x, whenever we're adding, right, like five plus x, we wanna undo uh, this five, right? So, you know, here one third was basically, you know, this is like having, you know, x divided by three. Remember I told you one third is the same as dividing by three. So we multiplied both sides by three. We did the opposite. Here it's x plus five. So the opposite of plus five would be subtracting five to both sides. Again, if you're comfortable with this, great. If you're not comfortable with this, we'll go over it uh, kind of throughout the lesson. So we get x is equal to, now, you know, 12.7 minus 5.0, I'm gonna add 0 0.0, right? That becomes 7.7. .7. Number three, we have two X minus nine is equal to six. And if you're ever not sure what to do first, what you wanna kind of think is when you're solving equations, um, I'm gonna write it this way. Like I said, the reason I write it this way is just multiplying or dividing. You just do whichever one of multiplying or dividing comes first left to right. And then adding or subtracting, you do whichever one comes first left to right. But when we're solving, you actually go backwards. So when you're solving, you can always think like PEMDAS backwards from the X. So what's happening to the X? It's multiplied by two and then subtract nine. Well, going backwards would be, we're gonna do adding and subtracting first. So we'll add nine to both sides. And then that gives us two X is equal to 15. Then we'll divide both sides by two and we'll get x is equal to, I'm gonna leave this as 15 halves. When we get to high school math, we absolutely, absolutely do not wanna put seven and one half. We do not want uh, mixed numbers unless a question starts with them. We really don't ever wanna introduce mixed numbers. And generally we don't even need to, to go to decimals. 15 halves is a totally appropriate answer. If you answered 7.5 or seven and one half, that is the right answer as well, uh, but you know, I'm gonna tell you that it's totally okay and acceptable and a lot of times preferred to just leave your answer as a fraction like that, okay? an improper fraction. And then the last one, we have 12 
plus 2x is equal to 3x minus 1. So what we want to do here is get all of our x's to one side and get all of our numbers to the other side. Now, it doesn't matter which side x goes on. A lot of students think that they have to put x on the left side. But what I'm going to tell you, the easiest way to do it is to put x on the side that has the biggest co coefficient. So the biggest coefficient is 3, right? We have like 2x and 3x. So actually, I want to get x onto this side because that's my biggest coefficient. So that's kind of how I do it. It helps out with not having to deal with too many negative numbers. So I'm going to subtract 2x to both sides. And then if you want to, you know, some people will put a line through the middle to kind of show that I don't, but you can. If you want to, you can add 1 to both sides right now as well. I'm not going to do that, but I'm going to tell you that you can. So this becomes 12 equals 3x minus 2x is 1x. I'm just going to put x, but if you put a 1 in front, that's okay as well. Minus 1. Now I'm going to add 1 to both sides. And then we get 13 is equal to x. Again, if you had wanted to do that all in one step and added 1 at the same time, you would have just jumped straight to your answer. So hopefully you at least got you know one or two of those right, maybe even all four of them. And we'll kind of move on. And what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the properties and, and why these are the way they are. This should be a little bit of review from eighth grade. So an equation, whenever we see the word equation, we want to think you know to an equal sign. right? So an equation will always have an equal sign. And it's a mathematical sentence that uses that equal sign to show that two expressions are equivalent. Right? So what goes on the left of an equation, we're going to call an expression. Right? What goes on the right of an equation is another expression. And those expressions are equivalent. Okay? So when one of those expressions has a variable, then you can solve that equation. So consider the equation x equals 2. You can substitute the value 2, and you would get 2 equals 2. Right? 2 equals 2 is like a true statement. 2 is equal to 2, they're both 2. So because this is the only value that makes the statement true, 2 is the only solution, right? You couldn't, you know, plug in 3, right? If you had x equals 2, you couldn't plug in 3 because 3 doesn't equal 2. That wouldn't work, right? You can only plug in 2. Kind of makes sense, kind of obvious. So uh, what we can do, though, besides plugging in 2 is we can kind of perform any operation uh, to create more solutions. So we're going to start off uh, before we do this with this vocab word. So a solution to an equation is the variable that makes that equation true. So considering the equation x equals 2, we're going to choose any constant and we're going to add that constant to each side. So you guys could pick any number you want here. You'd pick 2, you could pick 3, you could pick 5, you could pick 12. You know, you're going to just pick a number, you're going to add it to both sides. So I'm going to pick 7. I like the number 7. So if I had x equals 2, I'm going to just kind of put in, I'm going to use a different color, plus 7 and plus 7. Now, generally we write, uh, you know, the x first. We wouldn't write 7 plus x. Generally we write x plus 7. So I'm going to write it that way, equals 9. Now, if you wrote 7 plus x, that's fine as well. And again, your number can be different than mine, or you can just copy mine and, and choose uh, 7 as well like I did. Okay, next it says choose any constant other than zero. The other than zero is kind of a, an important part here. So choose any constant other than zero. And we're going to multiply uh, each side of the equation by that constant and simplify. Now, we want to be careful on this. So I'm going to kind of write b off to the side. They gave us a little bit of space. x plus 7 equals 9. When we multiply each side, we need to put each side in parentheses. So we need to put each side in parentheses. So I'm going to pick a constant. Uh, I would say other than 0 and 1, because if we, we multiply by 1, it doesn't change a number. So I'm going to choose 3. I'm going to multiply it by 3. So I'm going to do times 3 and times 3. And so what we have to do is we have to distribute. So this becomes 3 times x is 3x, plus 3 times 7 is 21, equals 9 times 3 is 27. Now we're going to choose any number other than 0 to represent a in the expression ax. And it says subtract ax from each side of the equation and simplify. So this is a little bit weird. Um, I, you know, It's kind of weird what, what they're doing. But they're basically saying um, 
to pick you know, another number besides three and subtract it. So what, what they're asking here in part C is for us to pick a new number. Um, I'm gonna pick two. So what they're asking us to do is to do something like this, minus two X to both sides, minus two X, minus two X. Generally when I do this, I if it has a two X, I try to place it underneath, right? So I put my three minus two X underneath X. There's no X term here, so I'm gonna just put it off to the side like that. So this is now gonna give us, right? 3x minus 2x is x plus 21 equals 27 minus 2x. And now it says choose any constant other than 0 and divide each side of the equation by the constant and then simplify that. So I'm going to divide everything by 3. So we could do, uh, actually let's not do 3 because we multiplied by three, let's do something else. Let's do, uh, we'll do, let's do five. So divide by five and divide by five. So this, we would get x plus 21 over five equals 27 minus two x over five. And then we don't have a partner, we're watching this as a video, but it says I have a partner, solve the equation and verify that x equals two is. So, you know, if we had x plus 21 over 5 equals 27 minus 2x over 5, how would we solve this? Well, the first thing, like I said, I really don't like having fractions. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to multiply everything by 5. Uh, because that's our denominator. That's going to cancel out the denominators. So we get x plus 21 is equal to 27 minus 2x. Now I said my strategy is to move the x to the side that has a bigger coefficient. The coefficient here is 1, right? Even though we don't write it, it is 1. The coefficient here is negative 2. 1 is bigger than negative 2. So I'm going to go ahead and add 2x to both sides. And I'll show this time subtracting 21 at the same time, right? You can do that. So I want to move the x's to my left. I'm going to move the numbers to the right. So the 21's cancel, the 2x's cancel. 1x plus 2x is 3x, equals 27 minus 21 is 6. Then we will divide both sides by 3, and that leaves us with x equals 2. So we did a lot of work. We came up with this really complicated uh, equation right here. Right, x plus 21 over 5 equals 27 minus 2x over 5. But ultimately, it never changed the value of x, right? We started off with x equals 2, and in every single line, x had to remain 2 because every single time we were adding to both sides, multiplying to both sides, subtracting to both sides, or dividing both by both sides. So that kind of leads us into these properties of equality. And again, this might be something that you did in eighth grade. If not, we're going to kind of formally learn them. You might have done them without naming them. But basically, when we add, a number to both sides, so we're starting off with a plus b. If we add c to both sides, right, it becomes a plus c equals b plus c, but it's still true, right? It's still true. Both sides are still equal. So we call this the addition property of equality because basically what's happening is when we add a number to both sides, right, we remain or we retain, you know, that equality or that equivalence okay so we retain equivalence meaning that both sides are still equal okay same thing with subtraction if we do minus c and minus c we get a minus c equals b minus c it's still you know a property of equality because both sides are still equal if we multiply both sides by c we get a times c equals b times c they're still equal and if we divide both sides by c right a divided by c and b divided by c we get a over c equals b over c. Now, there's an important part with the division property is, you know, you can add this. You cannot divide by 0, right? We said, now, you can multiply by 0, but you cannot divide by 0. And the reason for that, remember, is that if we had, like, a number like 3 divided by 0, that's undefined. So that's why we can't multiply by 0 or divide by 0. You can multiply by 0. When you multiply by 0, you just get 0 back. So those are our, our names for those. So we have two equations, one created by Sarah, one created by Ethan. 
and we're going to verify, right? This was kind of like from the process we just did where we start off with x equals 2 and they made, these are the equations they made. So we're going to start off by just plugging into, this is, you know, when we say substitution, it just means plug in, right? Like plug in the x value. And then we're going to do it through those properties by actually solving it. So I'm going to kind of draw a little line here. So Sarah's equation was negative 3x plus 14 equals 18 minus 5x. So the substitution method means that we're going to just, anywhere we see an x, we're going to put in a 2. I like to put it in parentheses. So negative 3 times 2 plus 14 equals 18 minus 5 times 2. Negative 3 times 2 is negative 6 plus 14 equals 18 minus 10. Okay. If you have negative 6 plus 14, you can always read that backwards like 14 minus 6. So 14 minus 6 is 8. And then equals 18 minus 10 is 8. I'm going to just put a little check mark. We verified that. Right? If you want to, you can write a QED. That's a Latin term, uh, which basically means that we proved it. So, you know, this was uh, doing that. We Notice that we didn't, like, add anything to both sides. We're just trying to see is the left side equal to the right side when we plug in 2. Okay. I'm going to choose another color for Ethan's equation. So Ethan had 2x equals 5 minus 1 half x. So we're going to do 2 times 2 equals 5 minus 1 half times 2. 2 times 2 is 4. When we do 1 half times 2, the 2's cancel out. But notice we still have minus 1, so it's 5 minus 1. A lot of students will like cancel that all the way out. Don't forget, when you cancel something out, it becomes 1. Right? When we're dividing, when you cancel out that way, like cross-cancel, it becomes 1. So this is 4 equals 4. Again, we can put a little check mark. You can write QED if you want to. Uh, we proved that. Now, using the properties of equality, right? that's going to be to actually solve it uh, you know, for x. So negative 3x plus 14 equals 18 minus 5x. So if I don't have any like fractions or anything, parentheses like that, I can just move my x's to one side and my numbers to another side. So what's bigger, negative 3 or negative 5? Negative 3 is bigger, so I'm going to choose to move my x's to the left side and my numbers to the right side. So because negative 3 is bigger, I always move my x's to the side with the bigger x, right? So I'm going to do plus 5x to both sides. And because we're in math, uh, accelerated. I'm going to kind of do this at the same time. Uh, but if you wanted to do it in a separate line, you could. Minus 14 to both sides. If you want to put a line through the middle, you can. So the negative 14s cancel, the 5x's cancel. Right? We just bring the equal sign down. You always just bring the equal sign down. So 5x minus 3x. Right? You can read this backwards. 5x minus 3x. That's 2x. Equals 18 minus 4. That's 4. Um, now, when we're you know verifying this with the properties of equality, we might want to kind of write in what we did, um, and we'll get there later. So we, what we did is we did the addition property of equality when we added the 5x. We did the subtraction of property of equality when we subtracted by 4, 14. Okay. Now we have 2x equals 4. We're going to divide both sides by 2. That's the division property of equality. And so we get x equals 2. Again, that's what we were trying to do. They said, you know, verify that both are equivalent. So we did. Okay, now same thing for the next one. 2x equals 5 minus 1 half x. So again, I said anytime you have a fraction, we want to multiply both sides by the denominator in our fraction. So we're going to multiply both sides by 2. So this is the multiplication property of equality. 2 times 2x is 4x. Then we're going to keep our equal sign. Now here on this part, it's a little bit trickier. You have to distribute the 2 to both of them. So I, you know, you can do this uh, whichever way you like to. I kind of like to just put in, you know, times 2 and times 2 because it helps me out. So 5 times 2 is 10. And then the 2 and the 1 half cancel. So it's 10 minus x, right? Don't cancel out the x, right? Technically, it's like 10 minus 1x if you want to put a 1x there. So now I want to uh, move my x's to one side. So 4 is bigger. So I'm going to do plus x and plus x. And that gives us 5x equals 10. And so now we'll divide both sides by 5. 
and we end up with x equals 2. So kind of looking back on this question, right, because sometimes students will get confused or lost here when they do this on their own. I want to go back and really review it. So first we multiplied both sides by 2. The reason we did that is to get rid of the 1 half fraction. So on the left it's easy, times 2 is 4x. But on the right, I just kind of put in, you know, times 2 to each part. So 5 times 2 is 10. And then see the minus sign needs to stay there. And the 2 and the 1 half canceled, but the x didn't cancel. So it's minus x. Right, then from there it was pretty easy. We did the addition property of equality to add x, and then the division property to divide by 5. So a couple more properties that you should have learned in 8th grade. But if you didn't, we're going to review or learn them now. Is the commutative property which is basically saying if I have a plus b, that's the same as b plus a. This is the commutative property like for adding and the commutative property for uh, multiplying. So basically what this means is when you're adding numbers, you can switch the order. When you're multiplying numbers, you can switch the order. Notice this only works for adding and for multiplying. This one does not work for subtracting or dividing. Right. The reason why is if you kind of pick two numbers like 2 plus 3 is 5. If I switch the order, 3 plus 2 is 5, right? It works. But if I did 2 minus 3, that's negative 1, and 3 minus 2 is positive 1, those are not the same. So commutative only works for adding. Same thing if you tried it with multiplying and dividing, right? You can't switch when you divide, you'll get a, a different fraction. So the next one is the associative property, which is saying, you know, if I have something in a parentheses, I can move one into the parentheses and one out when I'm adding. And same thing with multiplying. It's actually very, very similar to the commutative property. Some people mess these up or mix them up. They're very, very similar. They're almost the same concept, right? This is like if I said two plus three plus one. Normally we say we have to do like PEMDAS first. So this would become two plus four, which would become six. But if I switch the order, like if I switch the two and the three, three plus 2 plus 1 is 3 plus 3 if I did PEMDAS, the parentheses first, which is also 6, right? So they're the same. It doesn't really matter if I switch in there. And that's, you know, because of the commutative property. So that's why they're very similar. They're very closely related. And then the last one is our distributive property, which is probably the most important one, right? And that shows that when we are multiplying into a parentheses, right? We multiply to each term that gets added or subtracted. So a times b plus a times c. So kind of think of this, you know, any adding or subtracting sign here is kind of like our separator. You multiply to everything, you're separated by an adding or a subtracting sign. So in number two, we're going to now write the properties that we use each time. So this one's a little bit trickier. So I'm going to just go one step at a time so we can write the properties. So I'm going to do plus 4x and plus 4x. And so we're going to write out here what property did we use? We used the additive right, um, property of equality. So we used our additive or addition, right? I think that's what the used word we used. So we used the addition property of equality. So those canceled out, we get 24x plus 4x is 28x plus 7 equals, now when you're adding and subtracting, like negative 4 plus 4 is 0x. So we're going to put a 0 there. Okay, make sure you put a 0. You're not going to just like get rid of, you know, the equal sign. The equal sign has to stay there. Negative 4x plus 4x is now 0. Now I want to move the number to the other side. So this would be the subtraction property of equality. Subtract. So now I'm going to kind of cancel those out. And next we have, I'll write this over here, 28x equals negative 7. So I want to remove the 28, right? It's being multiplied to x, so I divide, right? If it's being multiplied to x, I divide. If it was adding, right? Like the plus seven, I subtract. I do the opposite. Those are called inverses. So the 28s cancel and I get X is equal to negative seven over 28. 
right? What property was this? This was the division property of equality. All right, and now x equals negative seven over 28. We can still simplify this. So we're gonna simplify this. Both of these are divisible by seven. Okay. So because seven times four is 28, so I can divide by seven and divide by seven. And we get x is equal to negative one over four. Right, and if you wanted to write a step there, really all we did was we just simplified. Okay, but technically this is actually also the division property of equality because we divided you know, the top and the bottom. Um, but I'm just gonna write that we, we simplified there. Okay, so nice and easy. So for the other ones, we don't really have room, so we'll kind of do these off on the side. But uh, you know, we have three times two x plus one equals four x plus six. So the first step here, if I have something that's you know with a parentheses is to distribute through the parentheses. So this will become 6x plus 3. I multiply 3 times 2x, 3 times 1 equals 4x plus 6. What did we do here? We did the distribu distributive property. Then from here, I want to move all of my x's to one side. So I'm going to do minus 4x and minus 4x. And I'm going to do it at the same time, minus 3 and minus 3 to move my numbers to the other side. Make sure you bring your equal sign down. If you want to put a line here, you can but make sure your equal sign goes down. So those cancel out, those cancel out. 6x minus 4x is 2x. 6 minus 3 is 3. What did we do? We did the subtraction property of equality. Okay, and then finally, we're going to divide both sides by 2 because I'm doing 2 times x. And again, we're going to leave our answers as a fraction. So x is equal to 3 halves. You don't need to make it 1.5, just leave it as 3 halves. What property did we do there? We did the division property of equality. Now, once you have a fraction, you can see if it simplifies, right? In this case, 3 and 2 are both prime numbers, so they don't simplify. And then our last one, I'm going to kind of get some space over here and do it off on the side. So we have 1 half x minus 6 equals... 2 plus 2x plus 1 in parentheses. Now, um, kind of what I'm going to do is, like I said, I like to you know kind of think PEMDAS backwards a little bit, but you always want to, before you do that, try to get rid of any fractions and any parentheses. So before I multiply by the 2, I want to get rid of these parentheses. Now, what is there to distribute? Be careful. Do not distribute the 2 because see how there's a plus there? There's an imaginary number outside of this parentheses, and it's 1. Or it's not really imaginary, it's just we don't write it. So whenever you just have a parentheses like that, with no number in front, technically, you know, you're just distributing 1. That doesn't change anything. You can actually just kind of get rid of the parentheses. So this is just 1 half x minus 6 equals 2 plus 2x two plus 1. So we didn't really actually do anything. You know, there's not really any property to write. Technically, I guess you could write distributive property, but really all we did is simplify. And then from here, right, I always want to simplify both sides, you know, before I do anything else. So notice on the left side, there's one X term and one number, but on the right side, there's one X term, but there are two number terms. So I want to simplify that before I move on. So I'm going to get one half X minus six equals so I'm gonna write the two X first, I underlined it once, plus three, I underlined my numbers twice. I always do that, you know, go the biggest X, you know, down to the numbers. So really all I did in these two steps were simplify. So if we wanna write what we did, and we simplified, we simplified. Okay, now we wanna get rid of our fraction. So now we're ready to get rid of our fraction. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna multiply both sides by two. Remember, we have to put this in parentheses. We're multiplying every single number by two. So it's going to be times 2 and times 2, times 2 and times 2. And like I said, I like to kind of just put in times 2, times 2, times 2, times 2. It just helps me not to forget anything. So 2 times 1 half, those are going to cancel out. But the x is still there. So this is going to give me x minus 2 times 6 is 12, equals 2x times 2 is 4, plus 2 times 3 is 6. Uh, 4x, 4x plus 6, right? 2x times 2 is 4x. 
and then plus three times two is six. Okay, so now where's my bigger x term? It's on the, the right side. So I'm gonna move my x's over to the right side. And what we did here, this property was the multiplication property of equality, right? That's what we did in the last step. So now we wanna move our x's to the right side, our numbers to the left side. So I'm gonna do minus x and minus x and minus six and minus six. So what did we do there? We did the subtraction property of equality. So minus x and minus six, those cancel out. And negative 12 minus six, if they're both negative, you can kind of think of that as adding and just keeping the negative. So 12 plus six make 18. 4x minus, 3, uh, minus x gives us 3x. Now we're going to get rid of the three in front of the x, three times x, so we're gonna divide both sides by three. We get negative six is equal to x. You can box it like that, or you can rewrite it as x equals negative six. It's the same thing. Okay. And so what we did there is we did our division property of equality. So I know these notes are kind of long, but it's just because we're trying to really name everything. Uh, if you need to justify something, now you have the tools, the vocab to, to do that. So uh, we'll kind of go through the rest of this quickly. So compare the strategies uh, by Kaylee and Destiny. 4 times 3x plus 2 uh, equals 8x plus 4, right? And really we should say 4 times parentheses 3x plus 2. So what did she do first? She It looks like she distributed. So she got 12x plus 8 equals 8x plus 4. Then what did she do next? It looks like she subtracted 8x to both sides. And she subtracted 8 to both sides. And so she got 4x equals negative 4. Then she divided 4 to both sides. Now let's look at Destiny. Destiny has the same exact equation. Okay. Destiny ended up saying, hey, let me divide both sides by 4 first. So she divided both sides by 4. And so here the 4s cancel out. So she got 3x plus 2. She just removed the parentheses because they're not needed anymore. On this side, what you do is, um, she wrote it like this. I like to kind of divide every term by 4. I think that looks makes it, uh, it easier on ourselves. So you can kind of just divide every term by 4. So 8x divided by 4 is 2x, and 4 divided by 4 is 1. So she got 3x plus 2 equals 2x plus 1. Then she subtracted 2 to both sides and subtracted 2x to both sides and she ended up with x equals negative one. Same answer, right? But they just did it in a different order, and that's fine. Personally, I think Destiny's way kind of confuses me sometimes, and so I like to distribute first, but if you'd rather go with Destiny's way, that's okay as well. Um, you know, as long as you apply these properties, there are lots and lots of different orders we can do it in, so that's what that's showing. Okay. So next, this next part is uh, gonna go quick, but it's basically about uh, you know, equivalency. And so it's about this concept of having one solution or multiple solutions. So if we think about two equals two, that's just true, right? There's nothing that we can do to change it. We can't add, subtract, multiply, or divide by anything other than zero. I wanna make sure we, we be careful, um, you know, other than zero, right? If you divide by zero, you're gonna get that undefined. So we wanna be careful about that. But if we think of anything else, if I do like two plus X, and two plus x, it's still true. If I do two times five, that's 10. Two times five is 10. If I do two minus six, that's negative four. Two minus six is negative four. It's just true, there's nothing we can do. So it's always going to be mathematically true. Okay. Whereas on number two, two equals three, there's nothing other than zero that we can add, subtract, multiply, or divide to make this true. Right, like two plus one, and three plus one, that's gonna be three and four, it's still not true, right? This is a false statement. So this is a false statement. So it's always going to be false. Two is not equal to three. The only thing you can do technically, I guess, is if you did like two times zero and three times zero, now it's true. So that's why I said, just be careful about zero. But really for the most part, you know, if you get two equals to three, that's just false. There's nothing you can do to make it true. So. This is gonna get us into this topic of having one solution, no solution, or multiple solutions. So just kind of off on the side, we're not gonna really go through uh, what they have because I, I don't like it. I'm just gonna kind of do this off on the side. Is if we solve and we get x is equal to a number, any number, this is obviously just one solution. Okay, It's the only answer that works 
for our equation. But sometimes what's going to happen is we're going to solve and we're going to get something like 2 is equal to 2, right? The x is all disappeared, okay? And when we get this, this is a true statement. When we get a true statement, what this means is that there are an infinite number of solutions. And so what infinite, oops, infinite, what infinite solutions means is that any x will work. Okay, so any x will work. And we'll go over like an example of this. Right, so, you know, it, 2 equals 2 basically or any, you know, basically number is equal to itself. Right? And then other times what will happen is you'll get something like 2 is equal to 3. Right? This is just false. It's not true. And so if you get something where the x's disappear and the numbers are not equal to each other, this means that there's no solution. Right? It means that there's no number on earth that is at least a real number that you can plug in to make x work. So um, when we say no solution, oops, what this means is that no x will make the equation true. Right, so they're just never, ever, ever equal. Right, and so it doesn't have to be two equals three, it could be any number equals another one. So kind of, you know, like, like I said, um, you know, I'd rather just instead of going over this, just kind of give you a couple examples of this. So really easy examples. If we had, say, 3x plus 4 equals, let's say, 13. If we subtract 4 to both sides, we get 3x equals 9. Divide by 3, and we get x equals 3. Uh, by the way, students always ask about showing work. Uh, I want you to try to, you know, show as much work as you need to. But some students are, are very comfortable at these and you might eventually get good at it where, you know, you can just say, uh, I know that I'm going to subtract four in my head and get three X equals nine. And then I can divide three in my head and get X equals three. I'm okay with this. Uh, but this would kind of be like the minimum amount of work that I want you to show. Right, I want you to at least show you know each step. Right, I don't want you to try to do all of it in your head. That's that's too much. Um, personally, I like it. You know, when I'm we're starting off to at least show you know the minus four and the minus four. But eventually, you can kind of just write it this way. All right. So this is one solution. Right. That's an example of one solution. Okay. Next, we're going to do an example of an infinite number of solutions. So we might have something like two x plus six is equal to let's say um, four times um, oops, that's my fault two times x plus three okay. uh, actually let's even make this harder let's do two times x plus one plus one so let's do something like that uh, plus two there we go I should have written these down before so here, uh, we're going to distribute first, and we get 2x plus 6 is equal to 2x plus 2 plus 2. Okay. So we get 2x plus 6 is equal to 2x plus 4. And so then what's going to happen is if I subtract 2x, no, neither side is bigger. So you know I'm going to just subtract 2x to both sides. And what happens there is I get... 6 is equal to 4. You would have also subtracted 4 and you've got in 2 equals 0. Either way, this is just false. So because 6 is not equal to 4, what we're going to write is we're going to write no solution. So there's no number in the world that we could ever plug in that would make 2x plus 6 equal to 2 parentheses x plus 1 plus 2. You could try every number in the world and nothing would ever make those equal. They're just not equal. It's a false statement. So there's no solution there. And then our last one we're going to do is 2x plus 3 times parentheses x plus 2 equals 10x plus 12. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to go ahead and distribute, get rid of that fraction. So we get 2x plus 3x plus 6 equals 10x 
plus 12 over 2. Now before I get rid of my fraction, I'm going to combine any like terms on that left side. So it gives me 5x plus 6 equals 10x plus 12 over 2. Now we're going to try to get rid of our fraction, so we're going to multiply both sides by the denominator. Now I want you to be careful about when we multiply, this is all one fraction. This is all one fraction. So you're not going to distribute this to the 10 and the 12. You're just going to cancel out the one fraction because it's only one fraction. Here, because it's not one fraction, it's two separate terms, I am going to distribute. So be careful about that. So now this becomes 10x plus 12 equals 10x plus 12. And you can see already that they're the same thing. But what will happen is if I subtract 10x to both sides, right, we end up with 12 is equal to 12. If you had subtracted 12 to both sides as well, you could have also had 0 is equal to 0. Either way, whether you got 12 equals 12 or 0 equals 0, this is a true statement. Okay? So this is completely true. So what that means is it means that we have an infinite, I, I write it this way, infinite number of solutions, or you can just write infinite solutions. So what that means is that any x you want will actually work. You'd try it. If I plug in 1 here, 2 times 1 is 2. If I plug in 1 here, 1 plus 2 is 3. So 3 times 3 is 9. So 2 plus 9 is 11. Right? I plugged in 1, and I got 11. Here, if I plug in 1, 10 plus 12 is 22. 22 divided by 2 is 11. 11 is 11. It worked when I plugged in 1. Let's try another number. How about 0? 0 is easy. 2 times 0 is 0 plus 3 times 0 plus 2 is 2, 3 times 2 is 6, so I got 6. When I plugged in 0, I got 6. On this side, 10 times 0 is 0, plus 12 is 12, 12 divided by 2 is 6, I got 6. So I plugged in 1, it worked, I plugged in 2, it, or 0, it worked, if I plugged in 2, it worked, 3, it would work, 4, it worked, it always works. Okay. So that's kind of uh, our notes for today. I know this was a long lesson, but hopefully it wasn't too complicated, it was just kind of a lot of vocab and kind of taking it a little bit slow. So for our homework, we have the pages 75 and 76. It's just this section 4. So it's section 4A and section 4B. It should not take you too long. But what I want you to do is uh, just to practice it. I know it's going to be frustrating. Write the properties that justify each step. You might need more space than this. I think you will. So you should probably do this on a separate sheet of paper. Because I think, you know, you're not really going to have enough space. Um, so I would really highly recommend that, doing this on a separate sheet of paper. So what you're going to do is, you know, write out each step as it goes. So, you know, negative 3 times x minus 4. Negative 9 times x minus 1. This is the distributive property. So we're going to write distributive property. I want you to write the properties. Um, so this becomes negative 3x. Negative 3 times negative 4 will become plus 12. Equals negative 9 times x is negative 9x. Negative 9 times 1 is plus 9. Okay. Now I'm going to, negative 3 is bigger than negative 9. So I'm going to add 9x to both sides. And that means I'm going to subtract 12 to both sides. Those cancel, those cancel. I can read this backwards, 9x minus 3x is 6x, equals 9 minus 12 is negative 3. Okay, you can kind of do 12 minus 9, but keep the negative sign. Now, this was both addition and subtraction properties of equality. I do want you to write out properties of equality. I know it's a lot, but you only have six questions. Then we'll divide by six, right? So this was the division property of equality. If you want to kind of abbreviate like that, you can. And so then we get x equals negative three over six, which we can simplify by dividing both sides by three. So we get x equals negative one half. All right, so we're going to do this. Like I said, you're going to totally run out of room if you try to squeeze it in here. So I would really recommend you do these on a separate sheet of paper. For this homework, I am not going to give you the steps, but I am going to give you all of the final answers. So I'm going to give you all six final answers, the evens and the odds, but I'm not going to give you the steps. I'm going to grade you by looking at your work. 
So you have no excuse to get these wrong because you can try, you know, if you're doing it the wrong way, you can try something else until you get that right answer. Then for part B, you don't have to write out all of these steps on part B, you can just do it, but you're looking for if it has one solution, no solutions or infinite solutions. So remember one solution is if you just get X equals a number, then you're going to write the answer you're going to write. You're not going to write that number. You're going to write one solution. So I don't want, I don't care what the number is. You're going to circle one solution for no solution. That's if you get like something false, like three equals seven, something false, then you're going to write no solution and you're going to box that you're going to circle that. And then for infinite solutions, it's if you get something true, like four is equal to four, then you're going to circle infinite solutions. So you're going to solve each of these. Again, I don't want you to give me an answer of like X equals six. If you got X equals six, you're going to tell me it's one solution. So you have these six and then you also have these six. So that's going to be your homework for tonight. That's the only homework you have are these 12 questions. Uh, I am going to give you the answers for each of them. So for all 12 of them, the evens and the odds, I'm going to give you the answers, but I'm going to be grading and looking at your work. Okay. So, Please, please, please. I know there are so many online calculators out there. Like I can name a million of them. There's like photo math. There's symbol lab. There's Wolfram alpha. Uh, there's tons and tons and tons of online calculators that will solve these for you step by step. Please don't use them because when you use them, then what happens is you get to a test or you get to like, you know, college or you get somewhere else and you don't have those and, and you just start failing. So it's really, really not worth it. The only way I would ever use those is if you got like extremely, extremely stuck on a question and you just kept getting the wrong answer and you kept getting the wrong answer and you kept getting the wrong answer, then I might try one of those just to kind of point you in the right direction. But if you rely on those, you're going to really just end up hurting yourself and not doing well on the test. So, uh, and, and in your future. So you really want to be able to do these on your own, you know, uh, the more you practice them, I know they're kind of intimidating with the fractions, but the more you practice them, the better you get at them. So I know number five is a little intimidating and even number six is a little intimidating, but just kind of do your best. Uh, you know, kind of what you want to think about is, you know, if I have this divided by four, right? If I'm like multiplying by four and multiplying by four, you're going to multiply this four here and the four here. And then the four here and the four here. So it's everywhere where you see like, you know, a subtraction or an adding like that. Um, but it only multiplies to this whole fraction once. So the goal is you're trying to, you know, when I do times four to this side, we're trying to cancel out that fraction. So I'm going to get left with seven times X minus one. And here, when I multiply by the four, I'm trying to get rid of the fraction. So I'm going to get left with minus three. Okay. Then on the right side, I think it's a little easier. I think you can do that on your own, but that should help you out with number five right um on you know something like number six you're just going to want to distribute everything so can i get in you guys started on this one and so this should end up being negative 8x negative 4 minus 9 is plus 36 6 times negative x is minus 6x 6 times 1 is plus 6 equals negative 8x negative 5 times 3x is negative 15x and this one looks hard but it's actually not too bad 5 times negative 6 fifths The fives cancel, so just minus six. So uh, just kind of do that. The other thing you could have done is you can just multiply the numerators if you ever are, are unsure about it. So uh, actually, it's plus six. Don't forget about the negative five there. It was negative five times negative six fifths. So the fives cancel, but negative negative six becomes plus six. The other thing you can do if you're worried about something like that is do negative five times negative six over five multiply the numerators. Negative five times negative six is positive 30 over five. 30 over five is six. So now I have a pretty long equation. And you know, like I said, my strategy first is to underline the numbers one, the X is once, the numbers twice on this side, and then the X is once, the numbers twice on the right side, right? Keep them separated and then simplify it. And then from there, that question should get a lot easier. So these are tricky. If you need help or you get stuck on them, please email me. 
Uh, please don't use like an online calculator unless it's like a very, very last resort. Try to do these on your own. And actually, because if, if you're watching this video this whole time, because these are actually really, really tricky, I'm going to be nice. I'm going to say we can forget about writing the properties. I, I think that we've talked about them enough. Um, so I'm okay with you, you know, not writing out what you did as long as you show your work. Okay. I think it's, you know, they're, they're pretty easy. That's going to just create too much work because some of these are pretty complicated. So let's just go ahead and, and kind of do it by just showing our steps uh, for these, but we don't have to write out those properties. Okay. All right. Have a good day, guys. And I will see you in class tomorrow for the test.